When you think of Kanto, what comes to mind? Pokemon. When you think about Kanto, the company making this video, the audio company, what comes to mind? It might be powered speakers. We've been specializing them for over a decade now, but we've sneakily offered passive speakers a few times over the years, much to the dismay of Senpai Tuck. We've had Ben, Yaro, Yaro 2, Yumi Passive, and now we have U Passive in both a four inch and five and a quarter inch flavor. Today, I'll be going over how to choose an amplifier, or amp for short, for your passive speakers, and give you a quick rundown of how to connect them together. Don't know what passive speakers are and are already confused? Let me explain. Passive speakers don't have much motivation. You tell them to get off the couch and go to band practice, but they're more preoccupied watching The Office for the fourth time. What I'm saying is they're not gonna play music without a little push. Passive speakers need a bit of external support. They need to be connected to an amplifier to get going. They don't have the electronics inside them to connect to a phone or a TV and produce audio. They're just a box with drivers inside. Back in the day, nearly all speakers were passive and you have to connect them to a stack of gear to make them work. But we live in a world now where smart speakers and Bluetooth speakers are far more common. So the passive speaker is actually becoming a bit more rare. In summary, speakers with amplifiers right inside the cabinet are referred to as active or powered speakers. Speakers that need to be connected to an amplifier to power them are referred to as passive. So it's actually pretty easy to match up a set of passive speakers with an amplifier. You just need to pay attention to the specifications of your speaker and use a bit of common sense. Or uncommon sense if you don't know anything about this stuff. Whatever, just listen to what I have to say. There are really only two specs on a speaker that matter when it comes to matching with an amp. Ohms, represented by this symbol, and wattage, represented by a W. Let's talk about ohms first. All electronics have resistance, how easy or difficult it is for electricity to travel through the electronics. We measure electrical resistance in ohms. The lower the number, the easier it is for electricity to move through the circuit. The higher the number, the more difficult it is. All passive speakers have resistance. They are electronics after all. An ohm rating on a speaker doesn't indicate how good or bad it is. It's just there to make sure you match it to the right amp that supports the resistance of your speakers. So if your speaker is four ohms, you should pair it with an amp that's rated for four ohms. Oh, if only it were that simple. Let's use U passive five and a quarter as an example. It's a six ohm speaker. In an ideal world, you'd want an amp that's rated for six ohms, but in the real world, most amplifiers are rated for two ohms, four ohms or eight ohms, powers of two. It's hard to find an amp rated for six ohms. If you find yourself in a position where you can't find an amplifier that has the specific ohm rating of your speaker, you'll wanna choose an amplifier that supports a lower ohm rating. In this case, you'd be better off using an amp rated for four ohms with your six ohm speaker. Think of it this way. A speaker that has a really low ohm rating is much easier for it to take power from the amp as there's less resistance. If you have an amp with a high ohm rating, an amp that's used to being connected to something with more resistance, the speakers are gonna try to take more energy than the amp is capable of, which may stress the amplifier causing overheating or distortion. The world's not gonna implode if you use an amplifier rated for eight ohms with a lower six ohm speaker, but you just have to be careful about keeping the volume in check so you don't exceed the amp's power delivery capabilities. That's common sense. The second spec is power, measured in watts. Some speaker manufacturers will give you a range of wattage you should use with their speakers, and others will give you just a maximum wattage you should use. U passive four inches spec at 70 watts per speaker and U passive five and a quarter is rated at 100 watts per speaker. That's the maximum power we recommend. If you send the speaker more than that, it won't be able to produce sound cleanly. It won't really get any louder and you can actually burn out the voice coil, the thing that actually pushes the speaker in and out. Now here's the thing you have to remember. The wattage rating on an amp is the maximum wattage it'll push out at its highest volume. 
you can connect a 200 watt amp to a speaker that's only rated for 100 watts as long as you don't crank it to full and send the amplifiers full power to the speakers. There's no issue in overbuying an amplifier as long as you use some, wait for it, common sense and keep the volume at an appropriate level. And what is an appropriate level? You'll know when your speaker is saturated and can't take any more power because it'll sound distorted or unpleasant, maybe even fatiguing to listen to. If you feel like you're hitting that point, just back off the volume a little and remember that's as high as you should go. So it's not an exact science, common sense. Feel free to overbuy an amp if you're responsible, match it exactly watt for watt, or even go a bit below the max power rating. 50 watt amp with U passive forage that can handle 70 watts? No problem. Just don't use an amp that's severely underpowered. If you buy an amp that only puts out 20 watts, you may need to run it at max to get appropriate volume levels. And at that point, the amp has no more headroom, so quick, loud transients like snare hits will sound lifeless instead of realistic, and the amp may distort, ruining audio quality. In the worst case, it may even damage the speakers or the amp. Man, that amplifier sounds terrible. That's a pencil sharpener. Now, most amps on the market aren't true amps. An amp just takes an incoming signal and amplifies it. True amplifiers don't even have volume controls. Yeah, in a full hi-fi rack mounted system, you sometimes have a separate component called a preamp to specifically control the volume of the signal before it hits the amp. Whoa! Most amps that you're gonna look at have other capabilities than just amplifying a signal. Generally, what most people buy are receivers or integrated amps. They do more than just amplify speakers. They can decode digital audio signals. Check out our What is a DAC video below. Or they might have Wi-Fi streaming capabilities and they can switch between a few different inputs. There are dozens of ways you can piece together a system. Too many for this video to cover. Your best bet is to determine what audio sources you're gonna listen to and then choose an amp with those inputs that also support your speaker's ohm and wattage rating. If you wanna hear me geek out on how amplifiers actually work and the technology behind them, you can check out my talk at the Hi-Fi Summit back in 2020. You'll find a link for that below. Now that you've picked the perfect amp for your passive speakers, it's time to set it up. You'll need to buy some speaker wire to connect each passive speaker to the left or the right outputs of your amp. You can buy speaker wire in a roll and cut it to length, or you can buy speaker wire that's already cuts the length you need. Before you attempt to set anything up, watch our video about how to connect speaker wire to binding posts to get acquainted with the process. You can find that in the description below. For this demonstration, we're gonna assume you have a stereo amplifier that only has two channels, right and left. Connect speaker wire from one speaker to the right or left output of your amp, making sure to connect positive to positive and negative to negative. Most speaker wire is color coded or it has a mark on one side to make sure you don't get it twisted. Repeat it with the other speaker and output on the amp. Connect your audio source to the amp, whether it's wired or wireless. Make sure your amp is turned on and switch the correct input if applicable and you should be in business. Passive speakers give you full control over all the elements in your audio chain, unlike powered speakers, which can't be upgraded or changed in the future. Give our U passive speakers a try if you're ready to get a bit more serious about your audio game or need to replace some aging speakers in your home theater setup or you're just looking for a low cost solution for a secondary audio system in your house. If I've given you the confidence to try out passive speakers and you felt like you've learned something from this video, check out some of the other ones on our channel. Heck, you can even subscribe if you want to if you don't wanna miss another one. I'm Jason from Canto Audio and I'll see you in the next video.